My next guest is one of the leading voices against the brutal Iranian regime, which continues to terrorise its own people. Iran is a real and present danger to the region and has been subjugating its own population for more than 40 years since the Islamic Revolution. We've seen the regime crack down brutally on protesters, and that happened again last year when the women in Iran led nationwide protests against the mad mullahs who run the country. Joining me now to discuss the latest is commentator and editor-in-chief at the Foreign News Desk, Lisa Daftari. Lisa, you have a short film called Women of Iran. I'd encourage people to watch it on YouTube. It's only a few minutes long, but it gives a powerful insight into these protests, including the way the regime has attacked the youngest and most vulnerable protesters. These young women who are being poisoned by chemical attacks in the classroom to set the example that young students should not be protesting, they should not be interfering themselves or getting involved in, in, in political uh, protest. These are examples of the brutality that this government is capable of. This Islamist regime, Lisa, it's just shameless, attacking schoolgirls for daring to protest. Yeah, it's and it seems as though, I'll cut to the chase and give you the punchline, it seems as though the more brutal they act, the more the Western world is looking to reward them. And I'm talking about the United States, the EU, the UN. They're getting positions, high-level positions at the UN. They're being honored at the UN. If you look at the EU and the US, we just found out this week, leaked documents show that the United States has been working back channels to get back into a nuclear deal, to normalize relations and to mm. unfreeze billions of dollars back to Iran's regime solely because that's their ideology. That's the line they want to follow. And the bottom line is that they're ignoring the cries of the Iranian people who have been out on the streets many, many times over the last 44 years since this government has been in office, but over the last eight months since the death of 22-year-old Masa Amini. She was the young girl who was killed over her wear of hijab, which mm -hmm. was more lax on her head. Uh, and for the last eight months, they've been out on the streets protesting this regime and telling the world we want them to go. Well, the Biden administration seems determined to do another Iranian deal, nuclear deal. Uh, why do you think that is? I mean, that is uh, just seems to be so counterintuitive to everything we know about how this nation behaves, what a threat it is in the region, the way it treats its own citizens and how, frankly, dishonest it has been in, in its dealings with other nations. So why are they so determined to essentially empower this rogue nation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, empower is the right word. And if you have to ask the question as to why the Obama administration wanted to get into the original 2015 nuclear deal, and of course the Biden administration being an extension of that, wanting a deal with Iran's regime to be the crown jewel of their foreign policy, their bragging rights, I think it goes back to a core ideological belief that uh, they're the good guys. And uh, you know, the fact that they spend billions of dollars a year on suicide bombers and give money to Hamas and Hezbollah and so many other terrorist organizations, the fact that they have more executions in the last month than they have had in years in terms of setting records, um, they're maiming, they're, they're raping, they are killing innocent protesters, uh, but it seems as though their ideological line is to make nice with the bad guys. And that goes against so much of the evidence that we have right now against their rogue behavior. They're not even trying to be on better behavior to get that deal, but they know that the United States wants it so badly that they'll get those uh, the billions of dollars and they'll get that deal as well, unfortunately. Now, back to your short film. You say in this uh, that the protests we're seeing at the moment and they've been uh, going for months, they're different from previous uprisings. This current uprising is different than anything we've seen in the past. The women are on the front lines. They're taking off their hijab. They're cutting their hair. They have become the faces. They have become the symbol of this women's led movement. And that's why the tagline, woman, life, freedom. Zan, zindagi, azadi. 
Now, the women in Iran were relatively free, uh, modern before the Islamic Revolution and things almost overnight went backwards dramatically. Um, and they've been protesting all the way through, but you're right, last year it was when so many threw off their hijabs and at enormous risk to themselves took to the streets and said no more. Tell me about this, this women-led movement. Yeah, it seems, look, there's been pressure on everyone in society, and I don't think this is solely a feminist movement, although the women have been incredibly uh, brave. They've come out on the streets. They've taken off their hijab. I mean, the face of this movement is obviously Massa Amini, the woman who was killed because of her wear of, of hijab. Uh, but the men are there with them. This is a generational fight. And the most unique aspect of this is the fact that they're so united this time around. For 44 years, we have seen different different protests. And each time we called it something different, right? It was the egg protest over the price of eggs. It was the gasoline protest. It was the Bazaari protest. It was the Green Revolution of 2009 over uh, fraudulent election. But this time around, it's as if all the narratives have been put aside. No one's buying uh, any of these narratives coming from the regime. And everyone is set on the same message of regime change, which is really the first time in 44 years that we haven't seen any calls for reform or behavioral change or any different candidates. They're asking for the entire regime to be removed. And that really is a historic moment, the fact that they can all be on the same page. Now, of course, the question always comes up, who's going to take over if this regime is toppled? The Iranian people are trying to focus on the first step, which is removing the regime and then deciding in free elections who will take over. But the, their first and obviously you know, more pivotal step is to get rid of this regime, to break off the shackles. And one of the reasons the women are on the front lines is because they've had enough. I mean, it's, it is um, generational, right? They look at their mothers and realize that their mothers mm. had more freedom than they did, right? Women in the 70s, you see the pictures, they're wearing mini skirts and they have their hair out and they had all these freedoms and a lot of daughters look to their mother and say what the heck were you thinking going out onto the streets and uh, causing a revolution and removing the shah of iran and here we are they're telling their parents you you caused a revolution you did this to our country we're going to get our country back and they look at that faux nostalgia they have this you know desire for times that their parents lived under and they want that back they want freedom so in the court of law of uh, uh, the worth of a woman in, in in islamic law is half that of a man if you have a male witness you need two female witnesses to equal that of a male you mm -hmm. cannot unilaterally apply for divorce if you do the male will get full custody of the children uh, the list goes on and on boyfriend girlfriend can't be seen in the car yeah. alone if they get caught there'll be questions so the, they're, they're under a lot of pressure and the women are taking the brunt of it. So that's why we see a lot of women out there being brave, being courageous and not afraid to be out on the street saying we want this regime gone. Now, there have been uh, many atrocities carried out by authorities uh, in Iran. You detail some of these horrors in the doco. In the first few weeks of this revolution, we had so many gruesome uh, examples, a young medical student, beautiful girl, thrown off of the building of her medical school when she ran up there to run away from forces uh, that were chasing her. We saw a university, a science university, equivalent to our MIT, so the best and brightest, the future of Iran, where the gates of the university were shut to trap the students. Then unmarked vans came and packed up these students and took them. We still don't know the fate of those students. The regime has reportedly carried out 90 executions, maybe more in the last 18 days. How have these uh, protests evolved from those first weeks and uh, what can we expect next? Yeah, it, well, I, I'm hearing numbers that are higher than that, and I bet you, Rita, that they're even higher than what we are hearing because we're not going to get the truth out of this mm. regime. Look, the fact that they're carrying out these executions, of course, they're symbolic in nature to, to send a message out to these young people not to come out onto the streets, telling them there will be dire consequences if they do. Uh, look, for eight months, in the beginning, we saw protests every single day across more than 22 provinces across the country, right? So this is not just contained to a, like a Tehran-based, you know, the cool kids in the urban cities. 
type of protests. They're all throughout the country. Even in clerical cities like Qom, you're seeing protests. So it is definitely widespread. Uh, but of course, people have to go back to the, to work and to school and go on with their normal lives. So we're seeing sporadic protests here and there when there is some sort of uh, day of recognition or an execution or something that they want to uh, symbolize in terms of a, of a protest. What's next? They're looking to the international community. They know they can't go at this alone and they want help. They want support. They know they're not going to get it from the Biden administration, unfortunately, especially now that they know the Biden administration is openly going out and trying to get another nuclear deal and to, to give more money to the regime. They're looking to the UN, who is honoring uh, the Iran's regime with uh, different titles, uh, while, again, the executions go on. So um, I applaud them for their courage because I do believe that they have continued being brave and continued continued in the face of the brutality coming out and making their messages known, uh, but they need help. And I think that uh, social media has been a great friend to Iran's regime, that I mean, to Iran, the Iranian people, and of course, the Achilles heel of the regime, right? That's why they cut the internet service so often there, mm. because they know that is the vehicle by which people are communicating. We have a whole nation of, of citizen journalists who are telling our, their stories and sending us videos. We're translating them, getting them up, and trying to tell their story as best as possible to get their story out there and to keep the, this entire movement under the uh, global uh, spotlight uh, to give them as much help and support as possible from thousands of miles away. And you do fantastic work doing just that. Lisa Daftari, thank you so much for joining me today. Likewise, thank you so much.